Warframe's recent update introduced the new game mode Deep Archimedia, which is probably the single most challenging content that the game currently has. However, more importantly, it shows that Warframe has one big problem with its quote-unquote endgame that I personally think pretty much nobody in the community is aware of. So, in today's video, I'm going to show you what exactly Warframe's issue with Endgame really is, and also why it is flat out impossible for the developers to ever give us traditional Endgame content, even if they really, really wanted to. Big shout out to all my generous channel members who helped me keep the lights on. And now, let's jump right into it. Alright, now before we jump in, I want to first make clear what type of video this here actually is. What I'm trying to do here is not complain about Deep Archimedia itself. You can surely like the game mode, you can dislike it, but that's not really the topic of today's video. I just want to simply and objectively explain the current state of Warframe on a deeper sort of game design type of level because I think we all need to be aware of this when we're discussing actual endgame content in Warframe. But now with that out of the way, what really is the deal with Deep Archimedia and what does it tell us about the whole state of Endgame in Warframe? Let's take a look at that now. Now, about Deep Archimedia, I don't want to go into all the details. Just to put it very briefly, this is a high-level game mode where when you want to get all the possible rewards out of it, you're heavily restricted as to which Warframes and which weapons you can take into the mission, and you get additional debuffs on top of that that make it significantly more challenging for you to complete the whole thing. But as I said, that's not what I want to talk about today. What I do want to talk about though is that Deep Archimedia shows a very, very interesting trend that Warframe is going into currently. And that is that late game or quote unquote end game content nowadays seems to follow this blueprint. And that is restricting your loadout or inflicting additional mission debuffs to make it more challenging for us. When we, for example, look at the Deviri circuit, which was previously one of the more late game modes, we also only had a restricted number of weapons and warframes available and had to sort of see where this gets us. Or, for example, with the recent release of Netra Cells also, this one uses additional debuffs to make the mission more challenging for us. And with Deep Archimedia now, this simply seems to be the next evolution of this type of game design. And here is the big thing and the reason that I'm making this video. No matter if you like Deep Archimedia or not, these loadout restriction type of missions is the one and only way that the devs have to even remotely challenge us as players. And in the rest of this video, I want to explain very clearly why every single other way to make a game more challenging that other titles use is impossible in the case of Warframe. So let's jump right into that. Now, first of all, when it comes to making your game more challenging, there is a one approach that has always and pretty much does always work with most games, and that is simply make the enemy levels higher. You know, if the enemy has a higher level, they take more damage from you and also dish out against you. For example, in Genshin Impact, the highest level that your character can possibly have is 90. However, the highest combat content in the game goes up to level 100. Therefore, your loadout needs to be pretty min-max in order to dish out enough damage against those boss enemies to kill them in time. However, in Warframe, this approach does not work at all. And here's why. See, the level cap for enemies in Warframe, as you probably know, is 10,000. Now, to be fair here, enemy level 10,000 is only encountered if you do long endurance runs or you play the Deviri circuit for like one or two hours. If you just play standard content, even if it's still path, you will never see enemies even beyond level 1,000. So enemies level 10,000 are a niche case to begin with. However, let's just give it the benefit of the doubt and see what this actually would mean for the game. At level 10,000, just purely looking at the damage output of those enemies, each and every foe is potentially able to one-shot your Warframe. The only reason why competing with these enemies is even remotely possible is the mechanic of shield gating. You know, I explained this a couple of times already. If your Warframe has a shield and then that shield goes down to zero, you become briefly invincible and have the chance to recharge that shield before the invincibility period runs out, so that this way you basically stay invincible all the time, and it therefore it doesn't matter how much damage you actually take. And then on the flip side, sure, a level 10,000 enemy has a ton of armor and HP, but we have multiple Warframes and abilities that deal percentage-based damage or damage that scales with enemy level, like for example, Zaku, Revenant, or Octavia, so that no matter if you're fighting a level 1, a level 100, or a level 10,000 enemy, they always go down equally fast against those Warframes. 
And if we take both of that together, you know, the relative damage and the shield gating mechanic, then we instantly see why raising the level cap in Warframe wouldn't make it any more difficult. When the enemies would potentially one-shot us at level 10,000, then yeah, they will one-shot us at level 100,000 too. And shield gating will prevent this from happening the same way it does at level 10,000. And at the same time, our Octavia, or Revenant, or Zaku is going to take care of those level 100,000 enemies in the same amount of time as well. So yeah, in contrast to a lot of other looter shooter type games, for Warframe, increasing the level cap even further is not going to be able to make the game more of a challenge for us late game players. But alright, when increasing the enemy level cap doesn't work, then we actually don't have to do that. You know, a lot of games out there don't even need enemy levels at all, and instead they focus on making the enemies cleverer, making them outplay the player to actually force the player to play more strategically. AKA, many games out there get their degree of challenge from the enemy AI being smart. And as I'm pretty sure we can all agree, Warframe's AI is really more on the stupid side of things, so there might be some potential here. So let's go over that. In Warframe right now, the enemies behave very simple. They run into a room and walk up to you in a straight line sometimes even, until they get into firing range, and then they stay where they stand and start shooting at you. Sometimes they walk a bit to the left and the right while they do that, but most of the times there is not really a lot of flanking or tactical positioning going on, they're just standing there waiting to be killed. So how do other games handle those type of situations, and what do they do to make it more challenging for the player? First off, in a lot of other popular shooter games, like for example Destiny, or Borderlands, or hell, nowadays even Helldivers, right? Enemies don't just walk up to you in a straight line. They know where you are, and they try to flank around you and attack you from multiple angles. This makes it a whole lot more challenging for the player, because you have to take cover and you have to be aware of where the enemies even are to make sure that you're not exposing yourself to a flanking attack. And then, in addition to that, we also have different enemy types, you know? We have snipers that stay further back and attack you from a range, but have a lot of damage potential. So if they're there, you have to be careful when to stick your head out. And at the same time, we also have melee-focused enemies whose sole purpose it is to run towards you and sort of push you out of cover, which then again exposes you to the sniper enemies who are further back, and all this creates a sort of stress on the player to focus your targets, you know, pick which enemy to attack first in order for you to be able to overcome this combat encounter. And interestingly enough, this also even exists in Warframe itself. You know, we have our sniper enemies who have more range and do more damage. We have our melee enemies who walk towards us and attack us in melee, who also deal relatively high damage compared to the standard grunts. And then, just like in other looter shooters, we of course also have our big bullet sponge enemies. However, while this game design is very common among shooter games, and while it works for Borderlands, and it works for Destiny, and it works for Helldivers, all of this, even if it was present in Warframe in its entirety, it would not work for Warframe. And here is why. See, in all other games that I've mentioned so far, you as a player have sort of the same physical restrictions as the enemies that you're fighting. Basically, you and the enemy have the same moveset. In Warframe, however, this is drastically different. Enemies too can run around, crowd shoot, you know, the standard movement set, but you as a player, you can jump super high with your bullet jump, you can run around the wall, you can even defy gravity in its core by aim gliding and make those super long jumps be extremely quickly and the enemies, they cannot do that at all. This is the reason why tactical positioning, flanking maneuvers and generally a more tactically thinking AI would not work for Warframe to begin with. If you see a sniper at the end of the corridor in Borderlands, you know you have to stay behind cover until you're close enough to actively fight them. In Warframe, if there's a sniper in the corner, you just bullet jump over there and punch him right in the face. In fact, and this is pretty funny, the most clever thing that the Warframe's AI could possibly even do is, as soon as they sense that you're on the ship, they would just destroy the mission objective off screen so you cannot win, and then all get off the ship as quickly as possible because they would know that none of them stand even the slightest chance to survive with you in the same room for more than 3 seconds. And let's be real honest right here, do we really want Warframe's AI to be cleverer? Do we really want them to take a more tactical approach and take cover and spread out and flank around us or whatever? I think we don't, because Warframe in its core is a power fantasy game, and this whole power fantasy thing only really works if the enemies are basically nothing more than insects that we can trample on with our boots. So long story short, while better enemy AI makes other shooter games more challenging, for Warframe this all doesn't really work.
All right. So we basically established that increasing the enemy level doesn't work for Warframe. Increasing the enemy AI cleverness doesn't work for Warframe. Therefore, the conclusion would be that combat in this game in general cannot be made more mechanically difficult in any way. I mean, if for you personally something comes to mind, then please let us know in the comments down below. I would be really curious to read through it. But as it stands right now, limiting your loadout restrictions is really the only way to make combat more challenging for the developers. But, you know, when it comes to challenging game design, combat is not the only thing, of course. We could, for example, implement more game design that focuses around Warframe's movement, you know, pose a challenge, not in combat, but in terms of movement. So what about that? First of all, we would have to establish how a movement challenge even looks like. And luckily, this is actually not too far-fetched because we kind of sort of have that in the game already. If we take a look at the Jupiter tile set, for example, you know, the big gas city, there are those really huge rooms with their outside area where there's just a few little platforms scattered across the big void, and your job is to make a way through that. However, we have a big problem with that, and that is what I also previously mentioned, we have the bullet jump, and most of all, we have the aim glide, which pretty much switches off gravity altogether. Yes, you could make your way through that room the way it is intended, with the cables, with the wall running, with the bullet jumping from A to B, but what you could also do is simply make one bullet jump switch into aim glide and fly through the entire room until you land 100 meters further in the distance on the last platform. This is not skill, this is not a challenge, and this can be done by literally every player. And even if they focus their room design solely around aim glide being a thing, you know, placing these platforms more than 100 meters apart from each other, then, well, we would simply play Titania and fly through it and be done. So, as we see, also for movement, there are ways that we as players have to sort of circumvent anything that could make it more challenging. But what about stealth? I mean, after all, we're still space quote-unquote ninjas. Well, I'm gonna make this one quick. First of all, most of the game, as we know, is procedurally generated. So if we had a game mode that is solely focused on us being stealthy and not detected, this would be relatively difficult, you know, when the enemies are randomly placed in the level and the levels themselves are randomly constructed from pre-made tiles, I could imagine that there would be situations where it's simply impossible to stay undetected and without handcrafted stages that are specifically made for us players to have multiple intentional ways around the enemy, I think this whole stealth thing could be very frustrating. And what's more, we still have invisible frames like Ash, Octavia, Loki, and Avara. And if the game were to tell us, well, stealth frames are forbidden on those type of missions, then this basically just proves the point that the only way to create a challenge right now is restricting our loadout options. So stealth also doesn't solve the difficulty problem. All right, so if apparently nothing works to make the game more challenging, then how about we don't challenge the player's active mechanical skill, but rather their brain power? How about we implement very hard to solve puzzles that the players will have to finish together in order to complete the mission? First of all, Warframe is a combat game, it simply is not a puzzle game, and having puzzles that challenge our brains is not really what we're playing the game for in the first place, let's be honest. Also, and this goes back to the procedural generation, procedurally generating an infinite amount of potential puzzles that always stay unpredictable is pretty much impossible, so they would have to be handcrafted. And when it comes to handcrafted puzzles, you know, I'm a Warframe YouTuber, there are other Warframe YouTubers out there, you can be very sure that all of the puzzle mechanics will be explained and acknowledged by the community within the first week after release. So that doesn't help to make the game more challenging either. But, Blackie, I hear you say, you have missed one critical point, and that is Eidolons. What about Eidolons? Eidolons satisfy all the criteria that you've mentioned so far. They are very well-designed boss fights, they are challenging, and they even need a whole team of players working together as one unit for them to get the most out of it. What about that? Well, let's talk about that. And in order to give you my opinion on this, I need to mention one game that doesn't really have anything to do with Warframe at all, and that would be Crash Team Racing for the original PlayStation. Uh, please bear with me for a second, I'm going somewhere with this. Crash Team Racing is a very easy game. Playing through the main story is fun, but incredibly unchallenging. The game is really easy. 
However, trying to play through the entire story from start to finish in less than one hour, now that is actually pretty challenging and you need quite a lot of skill to make it happen. Now, what does that have to do with Warframe? Well, just like with Crash Team Racing, idle and hunts in and of themselves are not difficult. You don't need a good team to complete a Tridalon. Heck, you don't even need a team at all. You can solo a Tridalon and even that is not really challenging. No, the challenge for Eidolon runs is getting as many Tridolon runs per night as possible. Yes, this is going to be challenging and this will need a very competent team. The same way that for Crash Team Racing, you will have to have a lot of skill in order to finish it in less than an hour. However, this is a player-imposed challenge. It's not the game that tells you you have to finish 7 Tridolons per night, otherwise you don't get anything. It's you. So, Eidolons in and of themselves cannot really be counted as a difficult or challenging game mode. So, about the Deep Archimedia, you can surely like it, you can dislike it. At the end of the day, there are arguments both for and against it. However, with this video, I hope I could make it a bit clearer where these whole quote-unquote loadout restricting game modes come from, and more importantly, what we rather need to focus the discussion on and what we need to fix if we want traditional quote-unquote endgame in the future. Another big shout out to Niels V, Demon Zell, Demon Emperor, Emperor Prime, Bland Waffle, Nost Linux Gaming, Lycan Shepherd, Turtle Pier, Shadow Soul, Pepper Wolf, and all other generous channel members for your continuous support. We see each other hopefully in the next one, and until then, as always, good loot.